But let's get talking about our own markets now. BEML is the first stock on our radar. For Q1 earnings, their consolidated revenues witnessed a decline, but the losses have narrowed. The company has uh, revised upwards their FY24 order book guidance to 17,000 crores. Shantanu Roy, the chairman and managing director at BEML, joins us now. Uh, Mr. Roy, your order book has been very healthy at almost 9,800 crores. And your FY24 order book guidance of 16,200 crores, which comes to a run rate of around 2,000 crores per quarter, uh, versus the 1,800 crores that you booked in Q1. Now, are you on track of achieving this guidance of 2,000 crores per quarter? And how is the order book shaping in the upcoming quarters for you? Yes, uh, I definitely see that we'll be able to meet our uh, uh, stated uh, number. Uh, you see, in the first uh, immediately after the first quarter, we have recently received the order for 3,100 crores of uh, metro contract for the Bangalore metro. With that, our current order book is 12,800 crores. And in the uh, remaining period of the uh, financial year, up to March 2024, uh, we expect that uh, we'll have some seven to 9,000 more, uh, 9,000 crores more of order book. Uh, so with the, with the current... Uh, expectation of uh, our sales revenue of uh, uh, a growth of around 30 percent as compared to last year we should be ending this year as on 31st march 2024 with the order book of around 17,000 crores okay got that uh, got that number down but what is the split sir between defense mining and rail and metro our present order book is 12,800 crores out of which uh, 60 percent uh, is from the rail and metro orders, around 30% is from the defense aerospace orders, and 10% is from the mining and construction vertical. No, got that. Uh, so the cabinet has approved seven multi-tracking projects of Indian railways worth some 32,500 crore rupees. Could you tell us what are the implications uh, from this for BEML as you, as you see it on a conservative basis? Definitely uh, the government's focus in the three verticals of defense in uh, rail and metro and uh, the infrastructure is uh, is in line with the company's uh, uh, three business verticals of defense in aerospace rail and metro and mining and construction and uh, the vande bharat trains the defense opportunities uh, in uh, uh, by our armed forces and the metro opportunities that are coming up, like the Chennai Metro, the Mumbai Line 6, uh, the Patna Metro that will come up sometime later this year. So definitely there is a lot of traction uh, to the company's order book uh, because of these opportunities. Okay, so from all of these opportunities that you just spoke about, is there any incremental revenue and order book uh, that you can see, say, over the next 12 to 18 months? The numbers, as I said, I'm expecting, uh, say, seven to 9,000 crores of further order book uh, to be secured by the end of uh, this current financial year, uh, provided uh, uh, the, the, the contracts get closed within that time. But uh, definitely the opportunities are there. Uh, apart from the Vande Bharat, we also have uh, the aluminium trains for the push-pull car. And as I mentioned, the, the three metro projects that are expected to be uh, completed uh, within this uh, particular uh, financial year. And in defense, uh, uh, basically, there is a lot of uh, uh, opportunities on the high mobility vehicle. On, I'm, I'm only concentrating on uh, our core strengths, that is the high mobility vehicle. Uh, the engines, the bridging systems, as well as the uh, armoring division, the armored recovery vehicles. So based on uh, these uh, uh, core strengths of our company, uh, we expect uh, to have these numbers uh, by the end of uh, the current financial year. Got it. All right, uh, Mr. Roy, looking at the current market dynamics, defense and rail and metro, well, they're seen as the high growth segments. That compares with mining as well as construction. So tell us, what is the outlook on the product mix and what does it mean in terms of margins? You know, look at the historical uh, data. Uh, mining and construction has always uh, uh, contributed between 45 to 50% uh, to the overall revenue. Uh, 
uh, in fact, last year mining and construction contributed exactly 50% to the revenue. Uh, this year, uh, uh, my our expectation is uh, that uh, the contribution from defense and aerospace as well as rail and metro put together will be around uh, 55 to uh, 58 percent, and the revenue contribution from mining construction will be around 42 percent. But still, in absolute numbers, mining and construction will keep leading. Uh, for at least the next two to three years. Uh, the outlook uh, is uh, based on the growth drivers of uh, defense and aerospace and rail and metro. We should be looking at uh, a contribution of at least 65% uh, from these two verticals in the next three to four years, with mining construction contribution uh, becoming around 35%. And uh, as far as the margins are concerned, if you look at our performance over the last three years, the margins have uh, gone up substantially since 2019-20, uh, when we got uh, affected uh, because of uh, the COVID. And the company has uh, bounced back from uh, COVID, and we have done pretty well. Uh, again, based on the rail and uh, defense, which are the key uh, growth areas, uh, our margins should further improve substantially. Uh, sir, how do you see the defense uh, book growing for you? Uh, any sort of internal targets set off by the company? Well, uh, we expect that the defense order book uh, at one stage will reach around uh, uh, eight to nine, uh, uh, around seven to eight thousand crores in the next three to four years. And uh, with that, uh, defense revenue can reach uh, somewhere between 4,500 to 5,000 crores in the next four to five years from now. Okay, just one more question, uh, you know, a small question on what's happening on the operational front. Your Q1 employee costs as a percentage of revenue is quite high at almost 36% if you compare it to the industry average of 14, 15%. How do you see this faring in the upcoming quarters? Uh, you know, would employee costs continue to be a, such a large chunk of your operational costs? Uh, as you rightly said, uh, in the first quarter, our employee cost as a percentage of revenue has been 36%. That is mostly because our fixed costs remain the same, whereas our sales revenue has been uh, quite low in the first quarter. And now, uh, our employee cost in the last quarter was around 21%, uh, and not in the last quarter, but in the last financial year. So we expect uh, that with a revenue growth of around 25 to 30% this year, as compared to last year, uh, we will more or less uh, maintain uh, the employee cost around 20%. Uh, uh, so number one driver will be the increase in revenue. Number two driver will be the natural attrition on account of superannuation of our employees. In the next couple of years, uh, we expect that uh, around 25% of our workforce will uh, be uh, uh, leaving us on account of natural superannuation. At the same time, we'll be inducting. So, for example, if 1,000 people retire, we'll be inducting some four to 500 uh, people so that, you know, there is a balance in the employee cost. But at the same time, we take care of the gaps in our skill sets as well. So, net-net, uh, uh, our employee cost should hover around 20% in the current financial year as well, or maybe slightly lower than 20%. Okay, we got that uh, then. Well, Mr. Roy, final question before we let you go. You have a planned capex of close around 200 crores. That's for FY24. That's for setting up ARV and HMV facilities. My question to you is, by when do these facilities become operational? And what is the asset turnover? What kind of revenues and margins you can expect from this capex? The CAPEX number that we have decided to infuse this year is around 5% uh, of our last year's revenue. And uh, the time for implementing the CAPEX is uh, between uh, 12 to uh, 15 months. So we can see the results coming up uh, uh, because of the CAPEX infusion, partly in 24, 25, and it will be fully uh, uh, giving the results from the year 25, 26. Okay, uh, well, uh, we'll leave it there, sir. Thank you very much for your time. It's always a pleasure having you with us here on CNBC TV 18. We'll take a